mother has remembered that she forgot to fix the dessert. How about the fresh strawberries? Finally, there are the fruits we eat for dessert. Wonderful fruits like apples, bananas, peaches, pears, plums, grapes, and many others. Fruit is really good for you, right? For the past three decades, there's only been one food group on her menu. This week, hundreds of fruitarians are gathered for the 2013 Woodstock Fruit Festival. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Uh, oranges. You have about 15 oranges. There are people in this world who swear by fruit and eat mostly, if not only, fruit. Although I personally wouldn't do such an extreme diet, I do eat a lot of fruit because I've always had the belief that fruit is healthy and necessary. But more recently, I've been cutting down on my carbs and fruits do have a lot of carbs. So I began to question this belief. Are fruits really necessary? Where does this belief actually come from? The U.S. Department of Agriculture has been publishing food guides since 1916 and one consistent recommendation has been the daily consumption of fruits. But what was the actual science that first supported this recommendation? Well, mostly vitamin C. Oh, and this cool hand metaphor. Five fingers that point the way to health. What was it now? Bread and butter or margarine milk and cheese, meat and eggs, vegetables, and fruits. Those are the foods you should eat every day if you want to be healthy. The last finger represents fruit, and there are two kinds. Some are especially rich in vitamin C and help ward off some of the diseases that keep you in bed. They help cuts and bruises heal faster too. We can get our daily vitamins from vegetables alone. We don't actually need to consume fruit every single day. There is no science that says we must eat fruit daily. But in the 50s, the USDA wanted to simplify its dietary guide. They wanted to make it have less categories, so it'd be easier to understand and to remember. And one of the changes they made was to clump fruit and vegetables together in one group. This prompted a lot of research on the consumption of fruit and vegetables together as a food group. And the results, as you might imagine, are overwhelmingly positive. They're associated with lower risk of mortality, obesity, heart disease, even some types of cancer. Apparently, they're even good for your mental health. They're linked to more optimism and less symptoms of depression. So we know fruits and vegetables together are good for us, but there's a big difference between them sugar and i know that's not the actual scientific difference between fruits and vegetables but to us normal people if it comes from a plant and if it tastes sweet then it's a fruit oh and a tomato is not a fruit so we don't actually know whether fruit alone with all its sugar is good for us because like i said there isn't much data on fruit alone but there is plenty of data on sugar and as you might imagine, it's not looking too good. Two studies out today that draw the same disturbing conclusion. Americans are not winning their battle against obesity. America's obesity has not doubled, it's tripled in the past 50 years. Obesity is epidemic in the United States and a major cause of death attributable to heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. Look at what this 2019 scientific review says about the behavior of Americans. They're eating 300% of the recommended daily amount of added sugar. And it links that to obesity because sugar is converted to fat and is stored in the body. But the paper talks about added sugar. So in this context in which we already eat way too much added sugar, and this is a global problem by the way, it's not just in the US. But what happens to all the other sugar we eat, which is natural. Okay, first I have to show you these photos that shocked me when I first saw them. This is what a banana would have looked like a few thousand years ago before we domesticated it. It wasn't big, yellow and creamy, it probably wasn't even edible uncooked. Our modern banana comes from thousands of years of selective breeding and crossbreeding of these two wild plants named Musa acuminata and Musa balbiciana. This is what strawberries used to look like. 
One of the modern strawberry's ancestor is called Fragaria Vesca, and it's much, much smaller than the strawberries we buy at the supermarket. This is what watermelons probably used to look like. The ancestor of sweet watermelon probably produced small and bitter fruits. Flesh bitterness is a protective trait for the wild watermelon, but it's undesirable for humans, and we selected against it. Accompanying this disappearance of flesh bitterness, the watermelon became sweet. So, with the advent of agriculture, we humans selected our fruit to be more resilient, to have less seeds, to get bigger and sweeter. So, all that extra sugar in fruit is not exactly how nature left it. Now, I want to make this clear. I'm not against plant domestication. I'm not against selective breeding. I'm not even against fruit. I love fruit. I, like I said, I eat fruit. But fruit has a lot of sugar and we're already eating too much sugar and we know it's harming our health. So I wanted to know, should I be eating fruit at all? And if so, what fruits I should be eating and what fruits I should be avoiding? I became fascinated by this topic. So a few months ago, I started on this journey of measuring my blood glucose every morning and seeing how my diet and my nutrition affect it. But you can only go so far by pricking your finger every day. So I wanted to know more. So I got this continuous glucose monitor. This is a sensor that measures my blood glucose minute by minute, 24 seven, and sends it wirelessly to my phone. This tech allows us for the first time in history to see how different foods affect our blood glucose in real time. I was really excited to start experimenting. So my first experiment was with fruits. I wanted to see how the natural sugars in fruits affect my blood glucose. Let's talk about how I designed the experiment. Every morning, at roughly the same hour, I had 200 grams of a different fruit. And I measured my blood glucose for 100 minutes, starting from when I had my first bite. One hour and 40 minutes was enough time for my blood sugar to go back to baseline for every fruit I tested. I tried to keep all other things constant, so I didn't eat for 12 hours previously. I only ate the fruit alone. I stayed still for the entire time I measured it. So all other things being constant, how did these four fruits affect my blood glucose? So this is how the banana spiked my blood. By the way, 200 grams is about two small to medium peeled bananas. It took about 15 minutes after the first bite to see a noticeable rise in my glucose level. It took 36 minutes to peak at 181 milligrams per deciliter. And after one hour and 20 minutes, all the effect was gone. Next, I tested oranges. 200 grams amounted up to one large orange peeled. I honestly wasn't expecting this result for orange. It took about the same amount of time to start seeing it in my blood, about 15 minutes. It only took 30 minutes to see the full effect, a bit less than it took the banana, but there was less effect. The orange peaked at 152, and it took almost two hours to revert to baseline, so a more sustained decline. My third test was apple. I got two different kinds of apples, red and green, and combined them to get 200 grams. That amounted up to maybe a bit more than a medium apple. I wasn't really that surprised that the apple had the lowest peak at 149 and the most mellow curve. Maybe an apple a day really does keep the doctor away. Finally, I got some red grapes. I had heard that grapes spike blood sugar hard, but I wanted to see for myself. This is what the graph looks like. It peaked after about 30 minutes at 186. So more than the banana and any of the others really. And after the 100 minutes were over, the sugar still hadn't completely cleared from my blood. It took about two hours for the effect to wear off entirely. One thing I noticed was that after the banana and the grapes, my stomach started to rumble like crazy and I got really hungry which I hadn't really noticed for any low-carb foods I've been eating. So now you've seen the data. Should you be eating fruit or not? 
Well, you're gonna have to decide that for yourself. But keep in mind, this is not actual science. I'm just a guy testing stuff out on myself. But I do recommend this, check this out. I wanted to find a better alternative to all the sugary fruit we usually eat. So I did another test. 200 grams mixed berries frozen. My blood sugar peaked at 127 and had a more sustained increase and decrease. So the berries didn't spike my blood sugar like the other fruits, only to leave me hungry one hour later. And actually berries are part of my daily diet. The first meal of the day for me is full fat Greek yogurt with coconut butter, berries, dark chocolate, nuts and cinnamon, all mixed up in a bowl. It's not sweet but it's so good, you need to try it. So let's see how the five fruits stack up against each other. The two most important metrics other than max glucose, I would suggest, are average glucose and glucose variability. They show you what your average glucose was over the measured time for each fruit and how wildly it varied over that time. You want to keep these low. You see the grapes have the highest values for all key metrics, followed by the banana. Even though they both peak at around the same level, the average glucose for the grapes is significantly higher. The apple and the orange are about the same, and coming out on top are the berries, which really don't have much of an impact at all on blood sugar. So should we be eating fruit every single day? Well, I don't think we need to, although I do think they're a healthy addition to our diet, especially if we eat them raw and fresh. Oh, and a quick side note, I also tested fresh squeezed orange juice to see how it compares with raw orange, and also to see how it compares with the same amount of Coca-Cola. Now that's an interesting experiment, I can't wait to share that data with you. If you're interested in that, please subscribe. Oh, and comment down below if you want to see me test something out. Back to the big question, should we be eating fruit? Well, in the context of a healthy diet with no pizza and pasta and soda and fries and alcohol, I wouldn't hesitate to eat a bunch of fruit. And even so, it's always a better idea to eat a piece of fruit rather than a piece of cake. But if you're trying to manage your weight or you're trying to manage your glucose levels, maybe consider avoiding fruits like grapes or bananas and swapping them out for vegetables. They have the same nutrients, the same fiber, minus the sugar. Managing your weight, I believe, really comes down to managing your glucose levels. If you always have extra glucose, extra sugar in your blood, that sugar is gonna be converted into fat and it's gonna get stored. I believe getting healthy is a process that starts with getting informed. So I guess what I'm saying is we're on the right track. I'll see you next video. Hey guys, I'm gonna be doing a series of tests and comparisons between different foods and the ones that don't make it to the videos, I'm gonna be posting on my Patreon. So if you're interested in that and you're interested in directly supporting the channel, please head on over to my Patreon link down in the description. Thank you for watching. Please drop a like and subscribe. See you next time. Peace.